Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel Panther Schools. My name is Amit Singh and here in this video we are going to talk about inheritance in Salesforce with the help of virtual keyword. So the previous video we talked about uh, in the objects we, we talked about the cat uh, that this is an object and it can have states and behavior like the fields and methods. Now, what is the need of inheritance? And why we need it inheritance? Basically, before we implement, we need to know why we need it. So, inheritance, I'll just give you a real-time example that everyone might uh, relate with uh, each of us, okay? So, inheritance is like uh, you have something uh, um, in your father, some, some say that properties, uh, you have uh, big houses, you have some fields, you have some forms right? that those kind of properties that you have with your father those are going to be inherited to you so you'll get whatever you for your father has or you can inherit all those properties now there is something some huge cases when you don't want it to inherit the property from your parent or you don't want it to uh, do something which your parents are uh, going to do for you or which your parents are saying that do this okay for example, in case of marriage, uh, your parents are uh, searching an alliance for you, but you are not happy. You already have searched the alliance for you. You already have a friend that you want to marry with, marry you, right? So in that case, you can override that property. You can override that myth. So now here in Salesforce, now let's come to Salesforce. We have animal, right? Uh, we have cat, we have dog, we have fish, any other animal we can have, right? Now every animal is like sorry cat is an animal dog is an animal fish is an animal right so inheritance is going to establish is a relationship between parent class and child class so dog is a animal cat is an animal fish is an animal right so is a relationship is going to be established now what are the prerequisites here the prerequisite is inheritance will always require a parent and a child class and now how you are going to decide which what is going to be there inside parent class what is going to be there inside child class so now let's talk about this like we have animal animal there are so many species of animals there could be n number of animals out there now some of the methods or some of the behavior of those animals are same like walking sleeping eating breathing right these are some of the behavior which are same across all the animals and then there are some of the behavior which are not same which are different depending on the animal like dog dog is barking when we say that speak then dog is going to bark when we talk about cat that is going to meow when we talk about uh, fish that is going to swim right so we can define some common methods on top of parent class some common properties like common states on the parent class common behavior on the parent class and then extend so say that we have defined one class one method one behavior called walk so dog can walk so we will we can use this parent class method but if we talk about face this cannot work then we will override or we will have own method which will say okay we are going to override that method for walking we will say face is swimming right that kind of things whenever the play whenever the things are there okay you want there is a established established relationship which is is a so when you when you can establish is a relationship always go with animal and uh, not animal always go with inheritance then there is a separate concept of uh, interface that is completely different we have recorded a video a separate video for that you can also watch that video now it had been a lot of scary a lot of talking about what interface is not interface inheritance is now let's quickly implement this this is our VS code. If you want to follow me, please go ahead, open your VS code or your developer console. 
I have a class called animal. Before that, we have a class called cat, which we have created in the previous videos when we talked about what is an object. And then I also have created a class called dog. These are the three classes that I have. Okay. Now this cat has few of the methods if we talk about sleep, meow, walk. Okay. Then again, dog has the same method. We'll talk about speak or sleep, meow, uh, sleep, bark, run, right? Cat can also run. These are the same methods. Now what we will do is we will say, okay, go ahead, create a virtual class. So whenever you wanted to achieve the concept of inheritance, we wanted to achieve the uh, concept of, we'll say that extending a class using the other class method, then we will be using a virtual keyword before with or without sharing keyword in the class so we have public with virtual with or without sharing class this is the name of your class these are some of the parameters that i have created like name age and weight then there is a parameterized constructor you are already aware about what constructor is that constructor is accepting three parameters and then assigning the values to these parameters then now we wanted to access these methods inside our child class and we also wanted to override these methods like we wanted to provide our own implementation i'll again take you back to the marriage example like you have your father property you are definitely going to take that you will say okay yes i wanted to inherit those property but when it comes to marriage sometimes you some people agree some people don't agree right in that case, you have to override that property. You have to override that behavior. You can say, okay, I'm not going to marry with the girl that you have for you have got for me. I'm I already have, I'm going to marry with her or with him. Okay. So there you can basically override that behavior. So to override the behavior, you have to make sure that your method is public and it is virtual. It's not static or anything, it is virtual. Then it is a return type. It could be returning something or not returning. Okay. And then the name of your method, which is eat. Okay. So we've got eat. We will say sleep and say, let's say that we are going to have some parameter in teaser hours. How many hours that animal is going to sleep? Then move. Animal is walking. Or let's quickly name, rename this method to walk and speak. Right. Then you can also have some other behavior. And we'll just go ahead and say deploy this. So this is a simple class, which is a virtual class having few parameters with a parameterized constructor and some of the virtual methods. Now these are all the methods that a cat can also have. So instead of creating these methods, providing the implementation inside that class, what we will do is we will go ahead and this time I'm going to remove all these methods over here okay i'm just going to remove everything from my class i have got a class called public with sharing class cat and then i will say extend this is a keyword which is a reserved keyword and then the name of my parent class which is animal so this is what we have got this animal okay now here what i can do is i can say okay let's quickly have a constructor over here so i'll say public animal because I have some properties over here like name, age and weight. Okay. So I just wanted to leverage these as well. So how we will leverage that is we are going to say, okay, let's quickly have the same constructor, which is accepting some parameter. And then here, what we will do is we'll say super. Super is a keyword, which is going to, uh, super is a method, which is going to call the super class constructor. This is your constructor. This is your super class animal. And this is the animal constructor. This is the super class constructor. So what it does accept super class accept name, age, and weight. So you've got this. Okay. Now if you wanted to print something, let's say that uh, system dot debug. Now you can print over here. Say that name, and you say this dot name. Okay. Save it and try to deploy. It. So we've got invalid constructor name animal okay sorry the name of our class is cat uh, we have given the different name so we have given 
cat as a constructor name and we got uh, variable does not variable is not visible animal dot name that's fine the reason it is not visible because we have made these variable as private over here so now we wanted to access these variables in our child classes as well inside our parent classes as well parent class means this class itself we will make that is public okay and then we will save it so we have just saved this okay we successfully saved this we'll go there into the cat class we will try to deploy this again now we are successfully able to deploy this code okay and what we will do is we'll say that's fine good very good now let's go ahead open our org i'm going to open this org and then we are going to have some demo okay we are going to create the cat class okay we are going to create a object for the cat class we are going to provide some information and then we will see if the debug is working fine we are getting the name of the animal is the name of animal or not okay so i've just logged into my developer org i clicked on this gear icon and then open developer console now this is my developer console from developer console click on this debug and click on open execute in ominous window this is here we have to create we'll say cat record okay new cat now again this is the constructor which is accepting few parameter so i'll just give the name of my cat is oscar and then is and then wait okay so i'll say is is three and wait is five okay and then execute it before executing make sure this checkbox is check open log then click on execute it is going to open the log for us click on debug only you can see name is oscar that means we are able to access the property which is in the parent class right you are able to easily access without even using that class name or something now let's say we wanted to here we've got a cat we've got okay cat is speaking now here we say that animal is speaking right now cat is something which speaks or which meow right so what we will do is we will override this method so how we will override is we will say okay public override void again the return type is going to be same this time the return type of your parent class method is void so that will be void and then the name is also going to be same we'll say speak now here we can say okay system.debug and here what we will say is we'll say go ahead and say this dot name and say is meow and if you wanted to call the parent class method for example you wanted to call the parent class method which is walk so how do you call is you will say okay use super keyword super dot and you will see right all the properties you can see over here and you can see all the methods so you can select walk and click on I like do the control s and just deploy this if you are in developer console you don't need to deploy you do just control s and your code will be saved now we have got this method which is speak if you see here this speak method is basically printing animal is speaking now we have overridden the behavior we have overridden the behavior of speak we are saying that this dot name means oscar is meowing okay we'll go ahead you just need to go to debug execute an ominous window like open this one and then i'm going to say cat record dot speak this is a method which we wanted to call okay go ahead and then again execute it so once you will execute and check on this checkbox called debug only you will see okay name is oscar oscar is meowing okay animal is walking because we have called the walk method from or within our speak method so this is how you call the super class method you call the parent class method so we have talked about overriding the behavior we talked about calling the method now let's talk about if i have a walk method over here i'm going to create a method with the same name say public void walk and i will say that uh, walking okay i'm just printing the same thing instead of changing uh, like from um, speaking to walk okay i'll go ahead you just need to go ahead do a control s and deploy the code to your salesforce org and then this time we will also call this walk method okay we got uh, you must use the override keyword void cat walk 
right? So if you're trying to create the same method or uh, you're trying to create same method with the same name which is there inside parent, okay? Then you'll get this error. Now, if you wanted to use the same name, you'll say, okay, go ahead and use public string and i'm going to return here null okay i'm just changing the written type a written type of my method and then trying to deploy it now let's see what is happening method must use the override keyword so we must need to override this method in order to use the same method name now this is basically what we have got this method overriding we don't need to return that's why we got the error we'll go ahead and deploy this now, if you wanted to have our own implementation of a method which is already defined in the parent class, we must need to use override keyword. Or you can just use a different name if you don't want it to use a method, which is here, right? Now, if we create another class, let's quickly create another class. This, okay. I'm going to extend this class. And animal is going to extend this. Now, we have a constructor. With the same parameters because again animal will have a name will have age and weight okay then we will call a super constructor and we'll pass these parameters name is and weight then let's quickly have a method over here a simple method now animal like fish cannot walk fish can swim right so this method when we need to use walk method for fish what we will do is we'll say okay go ahead or write this method and then here you can say okay put a debug a debug statement i'm going to copy the debug statement from our cat class and paste it over here now this dot name is swimming right because this cannot walk this can only swim so that is again you see now you might be uh, able to relate things when to use this inheritance concept when to use this virtual keyword now we will go ahead to our developer console we have already deployed open execute anomalous window i am going to create the okay face object the object of this class and you already know what all like what is the complete statement this complete statement you already know right so we've got this and then i'll say okay this record dot walk even the method is same the behavior is getting overridden. We will go ahead, execute it, and do a debug only. We will see Oscar is swimming because we have given the same name. So that is how basically you override. Now, this is an example that I have taken just to make you understand how to use virtual keyword, what virtual keyword is, and what is the concept of inheritance. Now, when you wanted to use this, kind of concept in the real time so say that you have a lightning uh, lightning component okay lightning web component which is kind of making a call out to a system it could be aws microsoft azure sharepoint or anything right so in that case you have all those methods like for example you have a class called uh, aws or you could have a class called LinkedIn. Under that method, define the virtual, under that class, define the virtual methods and then let all the child classes or all the child business to extend that class, use the same method for some of the functionalities like creating a post, liking a post, creating a job post and let them override the behavior for some of the uh, methods like uh, putting a comment inside a post, that kind of thing. So. And this is it all about inheritance and the virtual keyword in Salesforce. If you have a question, please feel free to put down into the comment section and please give it a thumbs up, subscribe the channel, share with your colleagues and friends. We will meet in the next video with the exciting concept. Thank you.